Okay, so quick reminder, uh, transition metals are in that center, central block on the periodic table. Um, they go a little bit over to the right as well, but most of the time we're just working with ones in the center. Um, transition metals, if you were trying to, if I give you the name of a transition metal, um, sorry, of a, of a compound that had a transition metal in it, and you were trying to crisscross and write out its formula. If you look on the periodic table right now, go ahead and look at the transition metals, there aren't any charges written on there. Um, for a few ones in their little square there are, I think um, silver should have a plus one written in there on your periodic table. Let's see. Um, right below silver, gold has a plus three written in, and up and to the right, zinc has a plus two. But other than those, none of the transition metals have any charges written there. And that's because transition metals are funky. You can take whole classes just on transition metal chemistry. Um, but they're super weird. They form different charges. They're not as predictable as, say, sodium and calcium and magnesium, where you can look at the periodic table and look at the top of the column and know, oh, it's a plus one or it's a plus two. So transition metals, we don't know their charge. We often have to figure out what their charge is. So, for example, let's say I want to name Ti... Cl2. Um, you can pronounce it Tickle2 if you want, it's kind of fun, um, but that's not actually its name. I'm going to start naming it how I would normally, how we learned last class. So the name of the first thing doesn't change, it's titanium. The name of the nonmetal, the second thing, changes its ending to ide, so chloride. Titanium chloride. Nothing different you would think, but we need to be more clear about which ion of titanium we have in this case. We need to be really explicit with what titanium's charge is. And we do that by, in the middle here, we're going to put a Roman numeral. Anytime we have a transition metal, in its name we're going to have a Roman numeral that represents the charge of the transition metal. Um, metals, whether they're regular metals or transition metals, are always positively charged, so I don't need to worry about positive or negative, always positive, um, but we need to be explicit about what the charge is. So in order to put that Roman numeral there, we have to figure out its charge, and we can do that because we know that titanium and chlorine came together in a way that they made a neutral compound. So I always start with the, let's, I'm going to write it down here again. I know from the periodic table that chlorine has a minus one charge. So chlorine has a minus one charge, but I have two of them. So in total, that's a negative two charge for that half of my molecule. I also know that the other half, the transition metal, needs to balance out that charge. So in order to balance out a negative two, I need a positive two. I only have one titanium here, because it doesn't have a subscript, so this titanium must have a charge of two, so I'm going to use a Roman numeral of two in the name. Titanium 2 chloride would be how I would say that. I know that 2 is telling me this titanium was a positive 2 charge. Look for a few more examples before you worry too much. Um, let's look at Fe2 CO3 3. Okay? I know that CO3 is carbonate. I know the Fe is iron, but I need some Roman numeral in the middle. Okay. Carbonate, the polyatomic ion, has a charge of negative two. Three of them, negative two, negative two, negative two, means that this whole half is negative six. The transition metal always needs to balance that out. So it'll be the same number, but positive, positive six. And that positive six that I need is coming from two irons, right? Here we had one titanium that needed to be positive two. Here I need, when I put two things together, I need them to total positive six. Each one must be a positive three. So I would put iron, 
three carbonate. Okay, that way of sort of thinking through and drawing it out works for some people. We can also do the exact same thing mathematically um, with some algebra. So I'll show you on both of these examples. Do whatever way you like better. Um, I would say I have one titanium. I don't know its charge. I have two atoms of chlorine that are each a minus one. And this molecule as a whole is neutral, has no charge. It'll always be equal zero if you're doing it this way. One titanium, whose charge I don't know, and two chlorines that are each a negative one, add together to give me no charge. Then I can solve for the charge of the titanium. Same thing works here. I have two irons whose charge I don't know, and three because of this three, three carbonates that are each a minus two. Overall, it's a neutral compound. There's no charge written up top. 2x minus 6 equals 0. I'm going over here. 2x equals 6. x equals 3. 3. Um, whatever way works for you. A lot of people have trouble with this. If you have trouble with it, please come and ask. Um, I'd rather keep trying to find a way that makes more sense to you um, than have you struggle through this forever because this doesn't go away as with most things. So ask if you need to. Um, what else do I want to tell you? Oh, some people, that's what it is. Some people just ask, well, why can't I just reverse crisscross, right? Um, if you reverse crisscross this one, carbonate would be a minus two charge, that's right. Iron would be a three, and that's how it worked out. Reverse crisscrossing this also worked out. Um, that works unless we had reduced without you knowing. So for instance, Mg, uh, that won't work. Um, here, let's do FeO, right? You would think it's iron something oxide. Because iron's a transition metal, I should have gone over that better. Because the metal that I see is a transition metal, I know I need a Roman numeral. That's how I know I need one. Um, and if you just looked at this, you'd say, oh, reverse crisscross, you'd get one but it's not one, that's not the right answer here. Um, oxygen is a minus two, so to balance that out, iron has to be a plus two. Or if you like the algebraic way, one iron whose charge I don't know, and one oxygen that's a minus two adds to zero. Iron two oxide. So that's a case where if you reverse crisscrossed, you would be misled. Um, Rewatch that if you need to. Ask questions if you need to, please. We actually really, really, really like questions in this class. Um, know what the Roman numeral represents. It represents the charge of the metal. Always the metal. Always the first thing. We would only use a Roman numeral if it's a transition metal. But we have to have it. Go try those.